Hello, everyone, and welcome to Your Business Incorporated. I am Bustin Damofai. Let's get the show started. Nigeria's debt profile hits a new record of 24.3 trillion naira. But that was as of December of 2018. And Africa's most advanced economy, South Africa's net foreign reserves, is down to $43.26 billion. In time, oil prices heading towards its longest weekly winning streak since November of 2017. Welcome to the show. Uh, let's get on. I am Bosu Namofai. This is how we're getting started with the markets and the major bosses here on the African continent. We're trading in the green in today on Friday. This is the final trading day for many bosses on the African continent. The Nigerian Stock Exchange starting here at home. The index posted a marginal gains about 0.04%, about 12 o'clock lunchtime here. South Africa's GST was up about 0.37%, and the Egyptian stock market, the KIS 30, a higher 0.33%. Kenya, however, Closed in negative 33 on Thursday, down 0.3%, 3.7%. Let's cross over to the Middle East, where the markets are closed for today. All but the Abu Dhabi Index closed in the green on Thursday. The Dubai, the Dubai Financial Index closed 0.57%. In Qatar, the index gained 0.28%. And the Saudi's uh, Tadawul stock market up about 1%. It's one of the best performers within the GCC. So the European uh, markets have a few more hours before today's closing bell. It's a big Friday, but it's been a very fantastic trading week so far for the European markets, largely because of the latest round of the U.S.-China trade talks, which has ended, however, without any meaningful conclusions. The Germany market uh, seemed to be one step away from the rest of the uh, European markets. Let's get a bit of a sense of these and other stop stories. We get the headlines across the world with Janelle Dumalon, who is my colleague, live to us now at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Janelle, it's good to see you uh, on the show. Good to see you too. Hello from Frankfurt. It's been a quite some time. Thank you. It's good to have you. So let's talk about this big corporate wedlock between Deutsche Bank and Commerce Bank. The ECB says Deutsche Bank will be required to raise more funds before the merger. So is this likely going to be uh, some delay here for this corporate uh, business combination, as it were? Well, there's still a lot of information missing from that particular piece of news. We don't know, for example, how much, by how much the ECB would require Deutsche Bank to raise capital. But analysts are saying that it'll probably be to the tune of it around 8, eight million euros. Some are saying it's more like 10. Now we have to remember that Deutsche Bank has insisted that it doesn't need to do this, that it doesn't need fresh capital to uh, merge with Commerz Bank. But uh, given the potential high costs of integrating with Commerz Bank and the potential for losses, due to this merger, perhaps uh, this buffer would be a much more sensible idea indeed. And, you know, this is, of course, this would present a further challenge to a uh a deal that's already very much challenged. Uh, we are, it was only yesterday that a German lawmakers actually warned the finance minister that they would block any attempt to invest public money in the merged entity. This is also still a deal with a lot of uh, public resistance, especially given that uh, 30,000 jobs could be on the line. And meanwhile, you also have a second suitor waiting in the wings for Deutsche Bank and Commerzbank talks to collapse. That's Italy's Unicredit, uh, which is uh, supposedly interested in making a bid for Commerzbank if it, if it doesn't work out with Deutsche Bank. Now, German media have reported that a deal could be forthcoming as early as this weekend or latest on Tuesday when the Commerzbank executive board meets. So it might only be a matter of days when we find out whether this deal is even happening at all. Interesting. Uh, but again, uh, you look, uh, I'm looking at the, the German DAX thing that's just over your shoulder there. Uh, Janelle, uh, looks like the, uh, the German DAX is coming up a little bit into positive territory uh, despite uh, what the week had been. What's the big story there? Some folks think that the German uh, DAX is a little bit weak this week, largely because of the, uh, those uh, economic data coming through from the industrial manufacturing and the PMI. Indeed. You know, Germans have this word called Zukunftsangst, and it means fear of the future, and that's definitely something that's come to play on the market, certainly this week. You've mentioned the, the, pure, the poor data, economic data coming out of Germany. We saw poor manufacturing data, and we saw cut, uh, cut growth forecasts, although it has to be said that there was a surprise positive today uh, in the form of factory orders, which saw um, an increase, a slight increase of 0.7 percent, edging above initial forecasts of 0.6%, but of course uh, 
Traders here had been waiting all day for the release of U.S. jobs data, which are coming out right about now. But they had also been looking towards the past with regard to that. Remember that uh, February's uh, jobs data saw a 17th month low and that very much soured mood on the markets. And it's just that investors didn't want to see a repeat of that. And that's, uh, that's why trading, um, at least up until now, has been pretty much subdued here. Mm. Janet, it's a Friday, so uh, if, if we get off the set, off the trading floor, the stock exchange there in Frankfurt, and I get out, out of the studios here in Lagos, uh, perhaps we could be meeting on, the, on a tennis court, you know, having this uh, a tennis, which is a multi-million dollar business. Now, uh, Naomi, uh, the Japanese uh, uh, tennis player is uh, agreeing to a deal with the software, uh, uh, Nike, switching from the rival uh, Adidas. So... Uh, what's your take on, on, on this? Do you think this is big business for Nike? And why do you think uh, uh, she's uh, switching uh, from, from Adidas? Uh, and again, what's your favorite play? Let, let's talk about that. What are you spending your weekend on? Well, you know, I'll be honest, with regard to this deal, I, it has to be said, like, I admire Naomi Osaka very much. Uh, she's, uh, she's very young. She has her whole career ahead of her. She beat Serena Williams at the U.S. Open last year, pride when she beat her idol. So these are very much moments that have stuck in my mind. And it's actually come as a bit of a surprise that Adidas decided not to hold on to her because there was also this initial reporting that they were going to extend her contract even uh, somewhere to the tune of $8.5 million. Now, that clearly hasn't happened, and she's expected to wear Nike, from what I hear, for the first time uh, later this month in Stuttgart at the Porsche Grand Prix, so some 200 kilometers away from uh, the Adidas headquarters. So this is definitely going to be a bit of a loss uh, for Adidas. Once again, we have a player, very young, still has her whole career ahead of her, lots of brand appeal. At the same time, though, it's also very hard to feel very sad for Adidas, considering that they also just signed Beyonce, so I, I'm guessing they're not crying any real tears. I am personally quite excited to see what kind of campaign they'll design around Naomi Osaka. If you see the former Nike ads, uh, remember that uh, they had managed to create at least two very big cultural milestones with their ads starring Serena Williams and Colin Kaepernick. They managed to combine political movements uh, with the personal stories of adversity of these athletes. And I'm excited to see what they would come up with for Naomi Osaka. I'm convinced it'll be very compelling. Uh, okay. If we ever get to meet on the tennis court, uh, we've got to we'll share more uh, light on that. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Whatever you plan with this weekend on sports. Great time, Janelle Dumoulin, my colleague at uh, the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, GWTV for Channels Television.